Welcome back. In the previous video, we learned about the dependencies field in package.json. Each dependency is code that is needed for the functioning of our project. Each entry consists of the package name followed by the package version installed in our project. In this video, let's learn more about versioning in npm. First, you should know that the npm install command always installs the latest stable version. In case of uppercase package, it is 2.0.2. You can, however, specify the version number when installing a package. For that, we can run npm install upper hyphen case at 2.0.0. When I run this command, you can see the version in package.json is now overwritten to 2.0.0. A good use case for installing a specific version is when the latest version contains a bug that has been overlooked by the maintainers. You can install an earlier version, start using it, and update when the latest version has been patched. We run npm install uppercase and the latest version is reinstalled. At this point, I'm pretty sure you're wondering why is the version number represented as three digits with a dot separator? Why is it not a simple sequential version number like one, two, three, and so on? Well, that is because NPM adopts what is known as semantic versioning. Let's understand more about that. Semantic versioning, also known as SEMVR, is one of the most widely adopted versioning systems. It is a simple set of rules and requirements that dictate how version numbers are assigned and incremented. In today's world of web development, new packages are being created every single day. All of them, at some point of time, undergo a change and it is crucial to keep a semantic and historical track of those changes. Under semantic versioning, version numbers and the way they change convey meaning about the underlying code and what has been modified from one version to the next. In doing so, it becomes easy to communicate your intentions to the users of your software. So how does it work? Well, a semantic version is of the format x.y.z, where x stands for a major version, y stands for a minor version, and z stands for a patch. For example, uppercase version 2.0.2 .2 indicates a major version 2, a minor version 0, and a patch version 2. Now the real question is, when do we bump the different version numbers? Obviously, we can't increment the version by a random number, right? So here are the rules. When you fix a bug and the code stays backwards compatible, you increment the patch version. For example, 1.1.1 to 1.1.2. When you add new functionality, but the code still stays backwards compatible, you increment the minor version. But this time, you also reset the patch version to zero. For example, 1.1.1 to 1.2.0. When you make changes and the code is no more backwards compatible, you increment the major version. In addition to that, you have to reset the minor and patch versions to zero. For example, 1.1.1 to 2.0.0. This semantic increment will help users make decisions regarding their projects. Now, let's discuss a few more points on versioning. Semantic versioning always starts with 0.1.0 .0, and that is because you never start with a patch on a brand new package. 0.y.z, a major version of 0, is used for initial development. When the code is production ready, you increment to version 1.0.0. At any point in time, even the simplest of changes has to be done with an increase in the version number. That is pretty much how semantic versioning works. I would say there is definitely a responsibility both as a developer and as a user. 
As a creator of a package, it is your duty to update the appropriate version based on the changes you make. As a user, it is my responsibility to keep track of the changes and make necessary corrections in my project when I update to the latest version. All right, I hope that you now have a better understanding of what a version really means, what impact it has, and why it is so important to update it correctly, especially if you write packages that are used by others. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.